Hey, Sal. Where are you going? Oh, hey, Kellen. I'm just on my way off to class. Well, well, then why are you smiling? Why am I smiling? I'm smiling because where I'm going, learning is fun. Huh? Come on, I'll show you. Now, when it comes to the quality of the animal, yeah. there are five classifications. Sal, you're late! <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not late. That's a hate word. You're just punctually challenged. Now get in here and bring your friend. Dr. Funstrom, this is Kellen. Kellen, this is Dr. Funstrom. Glad to have you with us, Kellen. As you'll see in this class, we're concerned about one thing and one thing only. What is that class? Having fun! So, today, we are going to learn about intervals. An interval is the distance between any two notes. The size of the interval will always be determined by the number of lines and spaces between the two notes. For example, G is one, two, three, four, five lines and spaces away from C. Now, intervals have five classifications. Major, minor, perfect, augmented, and diminished. But those have to do with counting half steps. And that takes forever and is so boring. And what do we say when something is boring in class? If, if you're, you're not fun, you better run, because we're going to get the boredom gun. Just say no to counting those tedious steps. There is a much more fun and efficient way to measuring intervals, and it has to do with the major scale. Now, Greg has done us the honor of writing a beautiful C major scale on the board. <laughs> Yay, Greg! <laughs> Now, in a major scale, the interval from the first scale degree to the second is called a major second. From the first to the third is a major third. First to fourth is a perfect fourth. First to fifth is a what, Greg? Perfect fifth. Uh -huh. <laughs> first to sixth, so... A major sixth. <laughs> first to seventh, Kellen? A major seventh? Changes. If you change a perfect interval by making it a half step smaller, it becomes diminished. Make it a half step bigger, it becomes augmented. If you change a major interval by making it a half step smaller, it becomes minor. Another half step smaller, it's diminished. If you change a major interval by making it a half step bigger, it's augmented. So, C of G is a perfect fifth. But let's say you're asked to give the interval from a C to a G flat. Go to the chart. C to G is perfect, but G flat is one half step lower than G, making the interval a half step smaller. So the quality changes from perfect to diminished. Well, enough of that. Sal, you're up. Today, I'm going to talk to you about unisons and seconds. Because they're so easy. Unisons are two notes on the same line or space. As simple as that. Now everyone put away your boredom guns. I want to talk to you about counting half steps for a tiny second. A minor second is one half step. A major second is two half steps. Okay, okay, don't shoot. I'm done. Popcorn Greg. Nice job, Sal. Thank you, brother. <laughs> There are major thirds on three notes, C, F, and G. And if you start on any of these notes, C for example, and count up three white keys, including the starting note, one, two, three, you've found your major third. And if you do the same thing starting on any other white note, you'll land on a minor third. 
<laughs> and what about those fourths and fifths? Easy. They are always perfect as long as both notes have the same or no accidentals. The exception for perfect fourths is F to B flat. The exception for perfect fifths is B to F sharp. Now, we've got our unisons, seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths. Kelly, why don't you tell us about the inversion method? Huh? Kellen, music is just a confidence game. We believe in you. Now go make us proud. So, maybe if we invert for the larger intervals, we wouldn't have to count all those boring half steps. So you gotta learn your unison, seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths, and invert for all the rest. Of course! It looks like seconds invert to sevenths, third to sixth, fourths to fifths, unisons to octaves, major inverts to minor, perfect stays perfect, and augmented inverts to diminished. To invert, just put the higher note an octave down, or the lower note an octave up. This interval looks huge, so let's invert it. A and G will bring the top note down an octave. It's a tiny interval now, so we can count a few half steps. One, two half steps from G to A is a major second. If we re-invert it, major inverts to minor, and second inverts to sevenths. So we have a minor seventh. It's all so clear to me now. Woo! Way to go! Way to go, Callan! Woo! 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 Nailed it! You guys are my best friends. Great work, Callan. I knew you had it in you. Well, kids, I gotta run. I'll see you next time. But remember, if you're not having fun, you're gonna die young. <laughs>